talk about free body diagrams in this video. And a free body diagram is just a useful problem solving tool. Essentially, it's, I don't know, it's kind of like a coordinate system in that it's a way to keep track of things that are useful in solving problems. Now, it is quite distinct from coordinate systems in that what we're enumerating in a free body diagram are all of the forces acting on a single object or perhaps a group of objects that we want to treat like a single object okay so just to get the idea of the purpose well often when we are talking about a particular object well we want to know something about its motion and to know something about its motion, we might want to know about its acceleration. And if we want to know about its acceleration, then we certainly need to know about the sum of all of the external forces acting on that object. Remember that this symbol right here is that, the sum of all the external forces acting on an object. So let's take, uh, as an example, a raft being pulled across a river, all right? And we've got two sort of views in here because we've actually got a fair number of pushes and pulls, a fair number of forces acting on this raft. And so let's start talking over them. Now, we haven't specified the situation really carefully here. So this, you know, is more of an exercise in thinking about all the forces that could be acting on this thing. But there's some that we definitely would want to, to think about. So, for example, we're saying it's being pulled across a river, and that could be from, you know, uh, either a boat with a tow line, or it could be from uh, someone with a rope on the shore pulling it across. One of those things where they can shuttle a raft back and forth on a single loop of rope. But in any case, uh, some, if we're going cross river, going this direction, some f pull from, um, yeah, let's call it, F sub rope. And in addition to that, remember this is the top down view. What else might we have? Well, um, we could think about if this is down river, we could think about a, a force from the current, right? Uh, so we call it F sub C. We could think about if the velocity of the raft is, is in this direction. I'll sort of draw the arrow over here so we don't mistake it for a force. It's not attached to the object. Uh, well, then there's going to be some drag from the object that, uh, um, from the water going across the object, across the, the raft in this case, that will oppose that motion, right? So some force due to drag. You could think about someone also paddling, in which case, you know, that, that force could be um, any number of directions. You know, you could think about paddling someone standing in this corner and paddling like on a canoe, and so you could have a paddling force, something like that, okay? In addition to that, right, it, this raft is almost certainly on the earth, and so if we're looking at the side-on view, so you can imagine the water, um, the water level being like right there, well then uh, the force of gravity would be pulling down on it, and of course, if that was the only vertical force on it, uh, the raft would sink, right? It would start accelerating vertically downward. And so we would hope for an equal and opposite buoyancy force, maybe just F sub B, but I'll write it out, buoyancy, that counteracts that force of gravity trying to pull the, gra the raft down. And it certainly would in the absence of the water, but um, the raft is buoyant, and so everything is happy. Okay, now this is not an exhaustive list of all the forces that could be acting on the raft, but gives you an idea of what a free body diagram of a raft could be in this situation. A couple things to note, we're clearly labeling all of our forces. So if I grab a different color here, um, notice that we're describing with the subscript and we're being quite explicit here but you could you could abbreviate it further exactly what is causing the force and we're also indicating the direction of the forces by putting you know the tow rope in the in the direction that the rope is pulling and things like that and we're also although we're not given numbers in this case we're also at least giving an estimate of the magnitude of these forces 
by, just like we would with any vector, drawing the arrows for the more powerful vectors, probably the toe line is going to be a really powerful one in this case, okay, or sort of a, the dominant force. So it's the longest, and then you've got a drag and paddle and all these other things uh, being rel more minor, okay, in terms of their effect, and so a smaller number of newtons of force associated with each one of those, okay? The other thing that we want to be careful of is that we don't want to think about the forces that the raft is causing on other things, right? The raft is pushing down on the water, right? So if we were drawing a free body diagram of the water around the raft, then maybe we would include that force, but we're not, right? We're looking at a free body diagram of the raft itself. In addition, whoever is pulling on this rope due to the third law is also going to be experiencing an equal and opposite force that is the same as that rope force. But of course, we don't draw that in this diagram, right? Because by definition of the third law, that force is acting on a different object, right? In, that, in this case, the uh, whoever it is that's, or whatever mechanism, is pulling on the rope and pulling the raft across the river. All right? So, in uh, slightly neater terms, okay, and I've left out the force of the paddle, I suppose, but you've got all the basics there, okay? <clears throat> Those are the general rules of making free body diagrams. Remember that we draw the object only. That's the, the free body part of it, right? I sketched in the water level, but that's about it. We didn't draw the rope. We didn't draw whoever is pulling on the rope. We didn't draw the water around this raft, the riverbank, all that kind of stuff. And it's not that I'm going to mark off points if you happen to include some context of the stuff that's around the raft or whatever object you're considering, but... It does focus the mind on just what is acting on this object, this one right here, okay, when you just draw it by itself, sort of free-floating in space, okay? So the context is certainly important to know which forces are acting on this object, but once you get around to the free body diagram, this can, can sharpen and focus the mind. And then the other thing is we only draw the forces acting on this object, not the forces that this object is exerting on other things. Those would appear on those free body diagrams of those other things, but they shouldn't appear here because they won't affect the net force acting on this object and thus its acceleration and its motion and all of these other things that we've studied uh, somewhat already in this course. Okay, so that's a quick primer on the free body diagram. We'll come back pretty soon to talk a little bit about internal versus external forces. You notice me carefully saying that this object right here is the sum of all the external forces acting on an object. We'll talk a little bit about what's internal versus what's external next time. See you then.